Hello and welcome to Elite Welding Academy's YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to properly prep your test coupons. So here on the table, I have some examples of some of the more common weld tests in the piping industry. And as you can see, I already have them marked up to be cut out. So let's do that and we'll get to the next step. Now, when it comes to prepping your coupons for a bin test, you have to make sure that you're using the proper grinding wheels and cutting disc for what the task requires. Here's an example of a cutoff disc, commonly referred to as a whiz wheel. This is the thinnest disc that comes in your kit, and this is what we'll use to cut out our coupons. Make sure before you do any cutting or grinding that you secure your coupon to your table or in a vise like I am here. Notice I'm cutting from top to bottom and all the sparks are being shot towards the floor. You can very easily catch your clothes on fire if you're not paying attention to where your sparks are being shot. Okay, so here I have all my test strips cut out and as you can see some of them I use an oxyacetylene torch to cut them out and we will go over that in another video. But as you can tell, we still have to flush out the roots and the caps. So let's go over the specific grinding disc for that task. First up is the four and a half inch by quarter inch grinding disc. This is the thickest disc in your kit. As you see here, I've secured my test strip in a vise. I'm grinding off the root in the cap, shooting the sparks at the floor, and notice I'm wearing all the proper PPE. Now once you've ground off the root in the cap, the coupon should look like this. The key things I want to point out here is that I've flushed it out with the base metal. I haven't thinned it out in the center section where the weld is. But now we're going to get into the final step, and that's the polishing. Now this disc here is commonly referred to as a tiger paw, but basically, as you can tell, it's just a big sanding disc. Now the goal with this disc isn't really to remove too much material, it's simply for the final polishing of the coupon, so when we do put it through the bender, we can evaluate the results a little bit better. Here's an example of what a finished polished coupon should look like. Now that we've gone over how to properly prep your test strips, let's go over each individual test strip and what makes them unique. So starting on the left, we have the six inch schedule 80 pipe that's being prepped for side bends. Next, we have the six inch schedule 40 pipe that's being prepped for root and cat bends. In the middle, we have the two inch schedule 80 that again is being prepped for the root and cat bend. Next, we have the open V-groove butt weld. This is done on 3 8 flat plate, and again, it's being prepped for the root and cap bend. And lastly, we have the D1.1 structural test. And as you can see, this one's a little bit unique. It has a backing bar on there, and we will have to remove that before we do the bend test, and we will go over that in just a minute. But let's start with the first test here at Elite Welding Academy, and that is the open V-groove flat plate weld test. As you can see here, I have the coupon fully prepped and ready to go. As I flip it over, you can see that I have the cap fully grounded down flush with the base metal, but you have to be very careful that you don't thin out the weld zone and actually make it thinner than the base metal. Another useful tip is to use your tiger paw and to go along the sharp edges of your coupon. This will greatly reduce the chances of cracking along the edges of your coupon during the bend test. Next up is the six inch schedule 40 pipe test. Okay, so here we have our coupon fully polished and ready for the bender. One thing I want to point out about this coupon is because it's pipe, the coupon has a curve to it. Notice here how it's not perfectly flat and the one thing we don't want to do is flatten it out in the prepping process. To keep the curvature of your coupon, make sure you grind your root and cap off in the same axis of the weld. Next up is our 6 inch Schedule 80 side bend test. Now this bend test is a little unique. As you can see, we've cut out a much thinner strip and the reason for that is we're gonna actually side bend this one to check our fill passes instead of our root and caps. On this shot, you can clearly see how this specific coupon has been cut out in a very square cut. That's very important so that the piece doesn't roll in the bender. Next up is our two inch schedule 80 pipe test. As you can tell, I have this coupon fully prepped and ready for the bender, but a few things I want to point out. First is, notice the curvature of this piece. Because it's 2 inch, it's going to have a more aggressive curve than even the 6 inch that we talked about before. Make sure when you're grinding and polishing the root side, use your grinder and go in the axis of the weld, don't go across the weld. Okay, so last up we have our D1.1 structural bend test. Okay, so here I have my test strip fully prepped and ready to go. 
As you can see here, we have two examples of the D11 coupon. The one on the right still has the backing bar on there. The one on the left already has the backing bar removed and ground flush. In order to remove the backing bar, we typically use the oxyacetylene torch to remove several layers of that backing bar. As you see here, what I'm doing is removing the backing bar layer by layer. As soon as I get it thin enough, I move in, hit it at an angle, and then melt the rest of the backing bar off without gouging the base metal. Now this can be a little tricky to do, and when it comes time to do this test, the teachers will go over this with you, and we will have plenty of oxyacetylene practice before we get to this, but I wanted to show you this so you have a general idea. So there's a brief tutorial about how you're supposed to prep all your bent test here while you're Elite Welding Academy. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to come get a teacher, but just make sure you treat every practice test as if it's a real weld test.